there's different levels of subtlety to your realization. And over time, your consciousness, your attention just starts picking up on subtler and subtler and subtler states of mind and consciousness, and also information points inside of your experience as an individual. Meaning that you become more attuned to other people, what's going on for them. You become more attuned to your own hidden layers, in a sense. So those are all subtler. They require, in a sense, a more refined attention span. And this just happens naturally over time. As you continue to relax your distracted mind and start noticing your indestructible, your undis indestructible, your um, unmovable mind or presence, consciousness. The more you become undisturbed by the passing perceptions, the more you start to see the perceptions that are underneath that, subtler than that. And when you remain undisturbed by those perceptions, let's say your spiritual experiences and awakenings, as soon as you don't even care about that anymore, you start seeing what's underneath that, what's underneath that, what's underneath that. So the more undisturbed you become in a sense, this does not mean you cannot be playful and relational and authentic and free and spirited. It simply means that you're undisturbed at the core of your sense of who am I. And when you are undisturbed on that core sense of who am I, and things just pass through you, and you don't come to conclusions at the first sight of an appearance, oh my God, what does this mean? What do I have to do with this? Shall I freak out? Shall I keep my calm? Instead, you just let it flow. You couldn't care less. Doesn't mean you don't care. In fact, this means you do care. You see? That's that paradox. When you don't care about one level of your self-made reality, that means you actually care about the truth of who you are underneath that self-made reality. It means you give yourself a chance to become more grounded in what is true and become less swayed and less moved by appearances. Appearances are just appearances. They will continue to appear and disappear, appear and disappear, appear and disappear for eternity. That means your eternity because your consciousness, which is eternal. So get used to appearances coming and going. Get used to appearances coming and going. That includes your boyfriend and girlfriend. That includes your children. That includes your parents. That includes your friends. That includes your career. That includes your money. That includes everything. Everything will always continue to appear and disappear. Get used to it, right? If you're not already used to it, then you haven't paid attention because it's been the case for 35 years or however old you are. It's been the case before that, but you don't remember. That's okay. But at least for now, you can see that. If you're still latching onto appearances, you've not learned a damn thing, which is great. Learn now. See that it doesn't serve you to be swayed by appearances all the time. It doesn't get you anywhere. It just gets you to where you already are. It gets you stuck. Same place, same frequency, same paradigm. Maybe miniature changes. But when it comes to that real sense of a live discovery of being an adventurer, a cosmic adventurer in a sense, being an astronaut of consciousness, an ancient astronaut of consciousness of the inner realms, which is everything, because everything is inner to consciousness, then you start changing with the changing and or not being moved by the changes at the same time. Motionlessness and the ability to change with the changing are the same thing. But to be distracted by appearances, to be reactive towards appearances, is not going to do you any good. It's not going to get you anywhere new. But feel free to continue to play in that way. You are unconditionally loved, after all. But just look at your life. Hmm? The best way to inspire you to make a change, whether that change is a shift in consciousness without any seeming action externally, or whether that change is also an action externally, a change in how you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself, how you act, what you say, what you do, what you believe, regardless of what type of change it is. What was I saying? Anyway, appearances come and go. Oh yes, this is what I was saying. I was saying that look at your life so far and see that it hasn't served you. So the most, the most appropriate in my experience, the most intimate and sort of focus on your own experience way to inspire change, to inspire transformation in yourself, which is not a bad thing. People often equate it with beating yourself up, but I love kicking my own ass. I love, I love transforming. I love making changes. I love seeing where I do things inefficiently. You got to develop a love for change because if you don't, you're going to end up with only self-realization. To some extent, you can just pease everything away. Pease, man. 
which is great. I mean, it's awesome. If you can do that, it's awesome. But also, what's even more epic is to be able to be the change. To be the change because you know you are changeless, because you know you're formless, and formlessness and form is one and the same thing. And so to care about the formlessness of existence is to care about the ways in which it moves without latching on and be rea being reactive to appearances. But moving, there's a difference. Move, don't react. Reacting or waiting or victimizing yourself or feeling separate from life is totally different than moving and changing with the changing and being engaged and caring about your existence. It's a totally different state of being. Reaction to appearances, latching onto them, coming to conclusions based on them, trying to change based on circumstances. Or let me wait until something happens that tells me what to do. No, never, right? Never, ever, ever do that, right? Never wait for circumstances before you move in the ways that you wish to move. So again, to be reactive to appearances or to latch on, just to highlight the difference between that mode of behavior and moving with the moving, changing with the changing in an empowered, stable, yet dynamic way. The difference between those two is that when you're reacting, you're actually reacting from behind your wall of self-protection. You're actually waiting in that sense. You're actually trying to wait things out a little bit before you take action because something scary might be around the next corner, no? Something unpredictable. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa, a surprise may happen. I may run into something I didn't see coming. Better not run at all. At least this way, I won't be running into anything I did not see coming. And we fear the things we don't see coming because we don't know from the self-protective layer of I am this in a separate world that don't trust the universe, that doesn't trust higher self, that doesn't see it as an inseparable self-created mechanism. From that space of limitation and separation, we fear what we don't know. We fear what we can't predict. We fear what we can't control because control and manipulation has kept us safe or so we thought. Miserable, but safe at least, right? So don't wait, start expanding now. Don't wait for anything. Be who you want to be to the fullest of your ability.